So now that you've seen a couple of examples of how to use the Manage Blocker interface out of the box, let's talk about a nice way to encapsulate it so it's easier to use in application programs. And basically, we're going to define a wrapper that will encapsulate Manage Blocker and make it easy to apply it on blocking I.O. operations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to define a class it's a wrapper class called blocking task, and this is going to be used to integrate blocking suppliers with the Java Common Fork join pool. And you can take a look at this example here in my uh, GitHub repository to see the code we're about to walk through. So blocking task, which is code that we wrote, has a method called call and manage block, which is going to wrap the underlying fork join pool manage block factor method, and it enables the use of blocking suppliers, supplier being a Java 8 feature, with the common Java fork join thread pool. And you, if you read this Stack Overflow article, you can learn the, the pros and cons of this approach. I like this approach, but it does, of course, as always, have some negative aspects which you should be aware of. What we do here is we create ourselves a local variable called managed blocker of type supplier managed blocker. We'll look at that in a second. That's a nested class we'll take a look at inside a blocking task. And the supplier managed blocker is used to encapsulate the supplier parameter. So we make one of these guys, and then we're going to say fork join pool manage block manage blocker, where the managed blocker is just this, this thing that we pass in here. And as, as it comes as no surprise, the um, managed blocker is implementing the managed blocker interface. So we, we submit that here, and then when we're all done, we get the result. This will not be a blocking call. This call could be a blocking call or will probably be a blocking call. This call will not be a blocking call, and it just returns the results that we obtained here, whatever they were, by calling this supplier. So let's now go take a look at the supplier managed blocker class. This is a nested class that lurks inside the scope of blocking task. And it basically integrates the use of a blocking supplier to work with the common fork join pool. As you can see, it's got a couple of fields. It's got a supplier field that's going to be used to stash the parameter that's passed to it by the constructor. Again, that gets set over here, right there. And then uh, what it does is it has a field that keeps track of whether we're done or not, and then it keeps track of the result. So those are the fields that are part of a supplier managed blocker class. Here's the block method. This is the thing that does the heavy lifting. What happens is we call the supplier parameters get method. Remember, a supplier is a Java functional interface that has a single method called get. And when it's called, it does whatever it's told to do. So it's going to basically do some computation, most likely block. That's the whole purpose of this. And so whatever it does, we pass it some computation. It blocks until we get a result back. We then set done to true because we're finished and we return the true value. The is releasable method just returns m done because we, you know, the first time through this is going to be set to false. And once it's set, it'll be then be true. And then the get result method returns whatever came back from calling get on the supplier. So that's just a way to get the results back. Here's an example, which is also in the ex20 folder in my GitHub repository. It uses a blocking task to ensure there are enough threads in the common thread pool, the common fork join pool, in order to download an image. And so here's the method. It's called blocking download. You can see you pass it a URL and you get an image back. And what it does is it calls blocking task call and manage block, which is kind of that outermost method we looked at. And that's going to turn around and call the download image method. And don't worry too much about what this does. Just be aware that download image blocks until the image is downloaded. And so by putting this in the context of the call and manage block method we looked at earlier, that ensures that the common fork join pool will be automatically expanded to handle the blocking image download, if it indeed blocks, which it most likely will. So that'll basically expand the number of threads in the pool by one to handle that download. The extra threads in the common fork join pool are automatically terminated later if they're 
uh, used for a while. They'll be, be reaped. Here's the Grim Reaper doing the reaping of the threads. And so as a result, it'll be a situation where we don't have to worry about uh, using these threads for too long. There is a downside with this approach, and this is really the, the downside with using managed blocker in general. This is not really just a problem with my little wrapper here. Uh, it's possible to saturate the CPU cores during bursty downloads or bursty workloads by just putting all kinds of stuff in there and they keep spawning threads and spawning threads and spawning threads. I think there actually is ultimately a limit that the Java uh, fork join pool puts on the number of threads that can be in the common fork join pool. I think that's changed over time, but there is some limit. It won't grow infinitely without bound. Okay, so that's the end of the example that shows how to encapsulate the fork join frameworks managed blocker interface using this cool blocking task wrapper.